Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Standing here at my South Bend Lake, I finally got something I've been wanting for it for a long time. It didn't come with one, and I thought several times about just making one, but then something happened. A new technology arrived. Well, it's been around for a while, but not in this way. This little item right here is called a threading dial. And the way it works is it has four positions on it. That tells you the relative position of the lead screw in relationship to the position of the cross feed. The unit has a small gear down here at the bottom that engages the lead screw. Now I've taken the set screw out which is supposed to lock that in position. Just for purposes of demonstration, I've taken the set screw out that locks this in place. This swings forward. The gear engages the cross feed. So I can say, okay, when, when the four comes into line, I'll be in line with the thread. Now I start the gear, the carriage moves, and that stays in the same relative position because the screw is turning, so the gear is not turning. That tells me that the tool that I'm using to cut with is going to stay in the same relative position, tracking a groove across the face of the part. Now what's the advantage of that? Well, I can stop, back the screw out, disengage the half nuts, rotate it back, come back up to the four, engage the half nuts, start it up again. And it's still in the same relative position. It just lets me maintain the position between the part and the lead screw. My tool is always going to track in the same groove. Makes it so I can make multiple cuts on a thread instead of having to put the thing in reverse and run the, the tool backwards while the half nut's still engaged. Because these are such a neat thing to have, Everybody that has a South Bend lathe wants one. And somebody figured out a long time ago that these come up missing because they get taken out. They get taken out and they're usually put away someplace safe. Where they're not going to get lost or damaged. But whoever owns the lathe goes on to his great reward, whatever that may be. And the lathe gets taken off the bench and sold. That thing is left in the cabinet because nobody knows what the hell it is. They end up getting pitched or even worse, somebody decides, hey, I got this thing. I'll sell it on eBay. They go on eBay and realize that they're going for $199 a piece. Yeah, $199 for a little casting and a gear. But it's a specific gear and it's kind of a pain in the butt to make. This is 3D printed. That's the new tech. 3D printing lets them make as many of these things as often as they want. It's a plastic housing with a plastic gear and a plastic dial. All this created from plastic on a 3D printer. It has 
four pieces of steel in it, two shafts, and two set screws. Pretty cool. Cost me $74 delivered. Now, would I like to have a cast iron one that went with the lathe? Of course. Everybody wants to have the original stuff. But if I can get it for $74 instead of $199 or more, I'll go with the $74 one. It works quite well. It has no load on it. All it does is just crack back and forth. It's probably going to outlast me and whoever else gets the lathe. Of course, this is probably going to end up in the cabinet and somebody will be selling it on eBay. Hopefully, a good long time from now. Now, I can do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. This is the thread for a post vise. Now, this part of the thread is pretty badly worn. But, this whole thread runs back and forth through the nut, which is basically gone. I can turn an Acme thread. That's a pain in the butt. But I can do it. I need to make a nut. This thread is probably going to last quite a long time. But that nut inside there is only about eight threads long. That's about two inches. So I need to bore out the inside of this thing and set it up for a sleeve with this thread threaded on the inside of it. For the thread dial, I can do that. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be interesting. Probably going to take me a couple of tries. But at least now I have the tools to do it with. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.